This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Wednesday, the 11th day of October in the year 2023. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting and here's what we're tracking tonight. A health forum on regulatory systems for health products in the European Union and the Caribbean opened today at the Pegasus Hotel, with a renewed commitment from Guyana to establish a biomedical hub to meet the vaccines and pharmaceutical needs of the Caribbean region. Speaking at the Technical Assistance and Information Exchange Instrument Regional Workshop, the Health Minister, Dr. Frank Anthony, said while Guyana has been manufacturing and exporting pharmaceuticals to countries such as the U.S., it intends to expand its reach through the establishment of a biomedical hub in the country. We have the government of Guyana, through His Excellency the President, has made a commitment that apart from the work that we are doing in um, you know, fixing our hospitals and our public health system, that another part of the work would be to create a biomedical hub. And with doing that, what we envisage is, a, is an area where we can do a lot of manufacturing for pharmaceuticals, vaccines, and other products, uh, devices, and so forth. Uh, but we want to follow those good manufacturing practices and to make sure that whatever is produced here would meet the global standard so that they can be exported to any part of the world. Guyana has been working along with the Pan American Health Organization to evaluate its regulatory framework with the intention of introducing modern legislation that would create an enabling environment that would allow the pharmaceutical industry to grow. We don't intend to be the ones doing the manufacturing. What we want to do is create the enabling environment so that companies can come here and set up the manufacturing plants and uh, manufacture from here and to be able to distribute in the region. We have some very favorable trade agreements with different countries in the region. The PAHO country representative Dr. Luis Cardina said the COVID-19 pandemic was a wake-up call for the Caribbean. He said at the time of the pandemic, the region's capacity to meet its own pharmaceutical needs was very limited, particularly in the area of supply chain. He said Guyana has demonstrated a high level of political will to transform its health sector and is moving to modernize its legislation. The PAHO representative added that PAHO is working with countries in the region to build and improve their capacity. The workshop, which has been organized by the European Union delegation in Guyana and Barbados, in collaboration with the government of Guyana and the Caribbean Public Health Agency, is intended to provide critical insights into existing regulatory systems in both the EU and the Caribbean and to strengthen the EU-LAC partnership resilience and vaccine production. Head of the EU delegation, Ambassador René Van Ness, said the technical assistance and information exchange instrument of the European Commission is a useful tool in the manufacturing of pharmaceuticals and will be a benefit to the Caribbean. But it is, again, a very powerful tool. So TIEX responds to more than a thousand requests for assistance per year. More than two and a half thousand EU member state experts are available. And that's the beauty about TIEX. So TIEX is, is um, and I don't say anything bad about consultants, but these are experts that come straight from the member states. These are people that do this work and they are available to share that. The two-day workshop is also being held in support of the Pharmaceutical Equity for Global Public Health Initiative that was launched by the Prime Minister of Barbados, the President of Guyana, and the President of Rwanda in November of last year. It is also aligned with the goal of the EU Global Gateway Strategy to strengthen supply chains and local vaccine production. We've got more news coming up for you in just a moment. Lord, 
I just love to shop in this store. My customers them gonna love all these things. So many different things in one place. Household items, electronics, toys, stationery, confectionery, exercise equipment, shoes and clothes for men, women and children, school things, costume, jewelry, perfume, makeup. Oh, look the makeup! Giftland <laughs> Office Max, Guyana's favorite department store. Having your own car means peace of mind. Having your own car means comfort and convenience. Having your own car means freedom to get there on your own time. It's deal on wheels at Republic Bank. It's time to get that new vehicle or upgrade to a better one with Republic. Super low rates and low down payment. Up to eight years to repay and great prices. Come in to Republic Bank today. Republic Bank. We're the one for you. Bust the flavors, that my craver, we're full of flavors. Tell your neighbors about the bust the flavor, flavors. Grab a bust the flavor, flavor, flavors. Yeah, thirst buster. Grab a buster, bust the flavor, taste the savor. Buster, bust the flavor, flavors. Buster, bust the flavor, flavors. Well, the Ghana Power and Light Company has announced that it has gotten approval from the Public Utilities Commission to implement a time-of-use tariff for the company's industrial and large-scale customers. The tariff increase took effect on the 1st of October and will remain in place until the end of January next year. According to GPL, during the peak hours of 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. to 10 p.m., the industrial and large-scale customers will be charged $70.30 per kilowatt hour. The off-peak rate will remain at $48.78 per kilowatt hour. The power company made it clear that the rates for residential and small to medium-scale business customers will remain unchanged. The government of Ghana recently announced that GPL was forced to disconnect 15 large-scale customers from its grid, owing to the current demand for electricity and the company being unable to fully meet the increased demand at this time. The power company had asked large-scale companies to remove themselves from the national grid and self-generate during peak hours, but not too many companies volunteered, according to GPL. The government has since indicated that it is currently looking to have additional power added to the GPL grid in the coming weeks to ensure there are no problems with meeting the demand that is expected in December. Several parts of the country have been hit with power outages over the past few weeks, and the Ghana Power and Light Company has blamed that on the increase in demand for electricity. The private sector commission, the Georgetown Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and the Ghana Manufacturing and Services Association have all been silent on the current power problems facing GPL and the impact on local businesses. Well, the Georgetown Mayor and City Council has announced a partial amnesty for interest accumulated on ratepayers' accounts. In a statement, the City Council today said the amnesty program, which is guided by a municipal amnesty policy, will end on the 31st of October. The initiative is intended for both residential and commercial rate payers of Georgetown, and the City Council is hoping to increase its revenue collection through the amnesty program. The program will see the waiving of interest generated from annual taxes for delinquent rate payers, and in some instances, only a percentage of the interest will be written off. According to the amnesty policy, Georgetown citizens who are interested in the amnesty can apply to the mayor, the chairman of the Special Circumstances Committee, and or the town clerk by filling out a form which can be uplifted from the city council.
The form will also be available on the City Council's website. The applicant will also have to pay a non-refundable fee of $500 for the application, must be either the property owner, the duly authorized power of attorney of the property owner, or the duly authorized representative of the property owner. The policy notes that exemption rates will be decided by the committee and no applicant will receive a 100% exemption without the approval of the mayor and city council. The policy further states that persons, corporations and companies that fail to take advantage of the policy will be subjected to legal proceedings to be instituted by the town clerk as provided for in the Municipal and District Council Act. Are you looking for men's suits for that wedding, prom, or special party? Or maybe you need to update your wardrobe with a modern fit or a new color for work. Search no more, because John Lewis Styles is the perfect men's suit store. Come see us on Waterloo Street, and our friendly staff will help you choose the perfect size, color, and fit. Complement that suit with a stunning shirt and tie, matching bow tie and suspenders, cufflinks, or even a pair of shiny dress shoes. You will love the way you look. John Lewis Styles, Simply different. Hits and Jams Entertainment, along with Moet Champagne, brings to you Eden, a premium white and gold garden party on Sunday, October 15th at the Promenade Gardens. Show up for Eden in your white and gold or toga outfit and experience a garden party with amazing decor, food, drink, and great vibes. Eden, get a free toga outfit with every purchase of a general ticket for only $5,000 while stock class. Also, get one free bottle of Moet, one cocktail table, and a toga outfit for only $15,000. Eden is brought to you by Moet Champagne and Hits and Jams Entertainment. Eden. can be unpredictable and when urgent medical needs arise you need a place that's efficient quick and reliable Eureka the trusted household name in healthcare has extended its services to include an urgent care and pharmacy to better serve you at Eureka urgent care we understand that time is of the essence so you can say goodbye to long wait times and stressful emergency rooms our team of dedicated professionals is ready to provide quality and patient-centered care Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and Saturdays 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Walk-in service or appointments are available. With emphasis on safety and patient satisfaction, our services cater to both our expatriates and local community. Eureka Urgent Care and Pharmacy for expert urgent care and medicine when it matters most. Visit us at 264 Thomas Street, North Cummingsburg, Georgetown. Having your own car means peace of mind. Having your own car means comfort and convenience. Having your own car means freedom to get there on your own time. It's deal on wheels at Republic Bank. It's time to get that new vehicle or upgrade to a better one with Republic. Super low rates and low down payment. Up to eight years to repay and great prices. Come in to Republic Bank today. Republic Bank. We're the one for you. CARICOM countries intend to use the upcoming Guyana Agri Investment Forum as a springboard to help stimulate the high food prices in the region, as well as to seek out investment. As the Caribbean region seeks to reduce its 5 billion US dollar food import bill by 25% by the year 2025. At a press conference to give an update on the Agri Investment Forum, which runs from the 20th of October, the Minister of Agriculture, Zulfakar Mustafa, said the forum hopes to heighten awareness of the transformation of CARICOM agri-food systems and the 25 by 2025 initiative. As the host and the lead country for agriculture within the region, Guyana is demonstrating its unwavering commitment 
to the development and modernization of the sector while realizing its potential of once again becoming the breadbasket of CARICOM. But the Agriculture Minister also noted that there is new emerging prospects in CARICOM agriculture, including technical and logistical solutions, which are expected to be on show to demonstrate the progress that has been made in the region on the agricultural front. CARICOM has already established a special ministerial task force on agriculture, with one of its main focus areas to address the rising food import bill and to stimulate investments in agriculture as well as food production. CARICOM heads agree that the Agri-Investment Forum and Expo would be the appro appropriate mechanism to address these issues. The Ministry of Agriculture of Guyana and the CARICOM Secretariat continues to lead as co-chair of the event while the planning committee includes stakeholders from government, development partners, and the private sector. Minister Mustafa noted too that there have been tangible outcomes from previous events, with various investments in CARICOM countries and similar successes are also expected following this year's event. Guyana is currently observing Agriculture Month. An accountability audit and observation study conducted by the Ghana Council of Organizations for Persons with Disabilities has found that persons with disabilities were significantly hampered from participating in this year's local government elections. The audit and study were completed with support from the International Foundation for Electoral Systems and USAID. The program manager for the Ghana Council of Organizations for Persons with Disabilities, Ghana Singh, explained that the study found that only 12.3% of the more than 550 polling stations used across the country had ramps in place to assist the disabled. So we found that 55.9% of polling stations had steps. Only 12.3% of the polling stations had ramps. 87.1% of the polling stations were actually on the ground floor. Only 1.4% had elevator or lifts, and these were the ones that were on the upper floor. Additionally, the audit found that just over half of the polling stations had obstacle-free access to voting booths. However, they all lacked critical guides for persons with visual impairment, according to the report. Persons with visual impairments were unable to vote independently, and this we know it's a, a, a subject that we would have been trying to address for a number of years. There were no tactile ballot guides, and these are the, the, the guides that you put over the ballot paper. And later on, we have samples that you will be able to see and examine. Um, those were absent. So persons who are blind and visually impaired were severely visually impaired, were unable to vote independently. It was also found that less than half of the polling stations provided written information for voters with auditory disabilities. Additionally, the report disclosed that while 78.5% of the polling stations had ballot marking tables positioned low enough for voters to access, only 46 of them provided adequate space at the voting booth for persons with wheelchairs or walkers. Additionally, only 22.2% of the polling stations had washroom facilities accessible for persons with disabilities, while only 30% had sufficient seating accommodations for persons with disabilities and the elderly. Given the alarming findings, the organization said the Ghana Elections Commission needs to do more to ensure there is greater access to polling stations for persons with disabilities. Polling stations and registration centers, so we'll deal with those first. This should be on the ground floor with barrier-free access. So basically, they should have ramps, um, no stairs. Well, if they have stairs, but at least you should have a ramp to allow for physical access of someone with a uh, disability. If it's not on the ground floor, they must have adequate um, features to accommodate someone using a wheelchair. Um, including lifts or a ramp to the second floor or even an elevator. And Singh is also calling for the Persons with Disabilities Act of 2010 to be amended to ensure persons with disabilities are able to vote independently and in secret. The Ghana Council of Organizations for Persons with Disabilities has also recommended additional training for Election Day staff. It also wants to see persons with disabilities being included among those hired by the Elections Commission to conduct electoral duties throughout the election cycle. 
Almost two weeks after four Guyanese nationals and two Albanians were arrested by the Spanish authorities after a Guyana registered boat that they were operating was found with more than 2,000 pounds of cocaine, opposition member of parliament Gita Chandan Edmund is calling on the Guyana government and the Customs Anti Narcotics Unit to provide an update on the status of the investigations. MP Chandan Edmund, who is the Shadow Home Affairs Minister, said the government must cease its silence and inform the nation of the status of the investigations into the latest drug bust with links to Guyana. She said she has noticed an eerie and worrying silence by the government, and it ought to be of concern to all right-thinking Guyanese. The opposition MP said the nation ought to be reminded that several days have elapsed since the agents of the Spain National Police and Tax Agency Customs Surveillance seized a ton of cocaine in the waters of the Atlantic Ocean near Cape Verde on a fishing boat bound for Spain. The opposition MP said although Kanu had made public that it was conducting an investigation, it is disheartening to see that more than a week later, there has been no update on the status of the investigation. Chandon Edmund said the delay by Kanu and the government to come clean on the latest drug bust is regrettable, considering that Guyana has in the past been labeled an international hub for drug smuggling. The fishing vessel, which carries the name Matthew, was busted in the Atlantic Ocean near the African country of Cape Verde two weeks ago. The vessel is said to be owned by Guyanese. In an operation between the U.S. Drug Enforcement Agency and the Spanish Navy, the six persons were arrested and a large amount of cocaine seized. The Spanish Customs Agency said the investigation is the result of the existing international channels for the fight against drug trafficking through which information was received from the U.S. agency, which alerted the existence of an international criminal organization that would seek to carry out the transfer of the large amount of cocaine from one vessel to another at sea. Guyana's economy is rapidly transforming, and we're all part of it. Guy Oil is at the forefront of this development by providing reliable and efficient energy and supporting community development from the very core. 100% of Guy Oil's profit goes back to building schools, roads, and other important infrastructure that connects our cities and towns, providing fuel to domestic, marine, industrial, and aerial transportation. Guy Oil has now repositioned itself as market leader in the petroleum industry, building a better future for all of us. Uh, sorry! Jack? Hey! Boys, where are you going with all that speed? Yeah, you know, today is the 15th, my NAS contributions are due, and I ain't even get the farms as yet. Hold on. You mean to tell me that you're not aware? that all self-employed persons can now make their NIS contributions using the MMG app from the comforts of their homes and offices? Really? You know, I just pay my bills using MMG, you know? Yes, Jack, and the thing's simple. All you have to do is open the app, select pay bills, government services, NIS, and pay. They will prompt you to enter your NIS number, the month you're paying for, and the amount. So, I don't need to submit any form? The only time you submit in a farm is when you're making a claim. Wait, wait, I could make a claim too? Oh, no, Manja, you didn't know that? <laughs> yes, all self-employed persons are entitled to all benefits from NIS. Well, except for the industrial benefits. And here's the good part. All of their farms, you can download them from the NIS website. My girl, I'm really glad I won't fit to you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, Make sure you pay your bills later. Later? I gotta sit down right here and pay my contributions right. first. Take care.
For further information, please visit the website at www.nis.org.gy, the National Insurance Scheme Facebook page, or your nearest NIS office. Food Max Supermarket, located on the ground floor of the Giftland Mall, is your one-stop shop for all your grocery needs. We stock a variety of imported frozen meat and food products, fresh produce and pet supplies, freshly made bread, rotisserie chicken and patties are also available daily. Shop in comfort today at Food Max and let our courteous staff assist you in satisfying your shopping needs. Food Max, the fresh food specialist. It's one of your biggest goals, getting your own home, where memories are made, where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach, but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true. Or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. Look who's in the mix now. The new Busta Soda Water. Zero calories. Zero sugar. Zero artificial flavors. 100% refreshing. Taste Bust the Soda Water today. Bust the Soda Water. Now available for only $120. With your regional and international news tonight, I'm Smetlana Marshall. In the region, three United Nations agencies have signed a two-year joint work plan to accelerate progress in gender equality and the empowerment of rural women in Latin America and the Caribbean. UN Women said it has collaborated with the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, and the United Nations Population Fund, UNFPA, in signing the agreement. According to the UN, rural women face multiple obstacles to gaining independence and economic stability. In crises, rural women are most affected by poor access to resources, services and information, the heavy burden of unpaid household and care work, and discriminatory traditional social norms. The FAO said women account for more than 20% of agricultural employment in Latin America and the Caribbean. The action plan proposed by these three UN agencies is structured around two areas, namely high-level political and policy advocacy to accelerate the reduction of the gender gap in access to productive resources to achieve food and nutritional security in Latin America and the Caribbean within the framework work of Sustainable Development Goals 2 and 5. In its race to be the first country to sell carbon credits on the new Paris Agreement scheme, Suriname has set a price of $30 per credit in a bid to raise $144 million, the country's environment minister told Reuters on Tuesday. According to Reuters, the sale would bring much-needed resources to help fight deforestation in a country 93% covered in forests, said Marciana Desai, Suriname's Minister of Spatial Planning and Environment. Environment. Reuters exclusively reported last month that Suriname planned to be the first to sell the Paris Agreement credits, known as internationally transferred mitigation outcomes. The 2015 Paris Agreement provides for international trading of reductions in greenhouse gas emissions, with companies or countries able to sell the reduction as credits to offset their own emissions. But countries only agree to a carbon trading rulebook in United Nations climate talks in December 2021, with trading yet to begin. Suriname's forest credits are generated using a baseline it registers with the United Nations nations, stating how much carbon stock its forest contains. And finally tonight, international news. Gaza's only power station has run out of fuel after Israel announced it was cutting off energy supplies as well as food and water, the BBC said in a report. It means Gazans will be relying on generators for electricity, 
if they have fuel to power them. The Israeli military says hundreds of thousands of troops are near Gaza, ready to execute the mission they have been given. Meanwhile, sirens have been sunging across northern Israel amid reports of an airspace infiltration from Lebanon. However, Israeli forces have now ruled that out. The death toll in Israel from the Hamas attacks has reached 1,200, while more than 1,100 people have been killed by Israeli airstrikes in Gaza. The BBC has learned that 17 UK nationals are dead or missing since Hamas launched its attacks on Saturday. And that's your News Source Evening Bulletin for tonight. I'm Svetlana Marshall reporting and encouraging you to stay safe.